Hello, Andros. Hey, Vip. Thank you for uh, having me here. My pleasure, Matt. So tell us about OutFunnel. Uh, what is it and uh, what category do you compete in? Good question. So uh, OutFunnel, we are makers of the most boring marketing tool on the planet. It's an interesting uh, category. It, <laughs> we'll get to the category, but... Uh, so we, we, we help to connect sales and marketing data, which is not hugely exciting, but it's super useful if you're a small business and your sales and marketing data live in different systems. So we help to bring them together. But it's not like a CDP or segment. It's, so how, when you say you bring the data together, what, what does it really mean? If you ask a small business, do, do you need a CDP or have you heard of segment? They would say no. But if you ask, is your sales and marketing data together? They would also say no. So we are, um, uh, I mean, we're not really creating a category. Getting, pu putting data in the same place is not a new thing. It's been done decades before us. But uh, I think our approach is slightly novel in a sense that we are doing this for a different segment um, and then uh, in, a, in a slightly different way than, than companies before us. And who, 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 who is the customer you are trying to win over? So it's, uh, it's companies who use a CRM. And then who use a marketing tool or many marketing tools, uh, which are not in the same uh, kind of by the same vendor. So if you're using HubSpot, good. Your data is in the same place already. You don't really need us at all. But let's say that they want to use HubSpot as your CRM and uh, Active Campaign as your marketing tool, or Pipetrap as your CRM, and then uh, Wufu Forms and uh, Mailchimp as your uh, email marketing tool. Then uh, you'd need. Uh, development resources uh, or a small miracle to get the data in the same place and mm. miracles I think haven't happened so so that's we, we then created out funnel got it uh, and how, how long has this company been around so we've been around for um, for three years uh, slightly more than three years and a bit of a backstory on the product and maybe it's relevant for the kind of uh, for the uh, discussion later on is that uh, we got started three years ago and we built the smallest possible thing to build in order to get going, to get some customer feedback. So we started with the pipe drive to MailChimp deep integration. And the thinking was, we'll get started with that and then we'll get to building our own thing, which was um, an email marketing tool which you can plug into uh, to CRM super easily. Uh, but then market changed and then although we we... We saw, I mean, we've seen quite good success with our product so far. Um, we're growing, I think, faster than many other startups are growing, or faster than most startups are growing. But we realized that this small thing we built back in the day as a, as a thing to get going is still getting customers, is still getting really good feedback. Uh, the product market fit for that product is actually higher than for our kind of newer product. Uh, and then we went back to the drawing board and now are really refocusing really our tool as not a, a kind of marketing automation tool, but a layer, a super glue between sales and marketing tools. Got it. Okay. So it's, it's a, a pivot of a sort. Uh, you're, you're changing your positioning based on the market feedback. And, and so that change, did it come because um, you, you, the need went away, the problem that you were solving was not as pertinent or is like, we don't want to build another email marketing tool or like, what was the, this, the data you got or the insight that made you change your mind about what your guys are about? Yeah, so a couple of different things changed. The one is that uh, we looked at customer feedback. Like I said, we made the product market fit survey. We did separately for, uh, for our kind of email marketing tool and for our data connector product. And uh, the, the results were more favorable for the connected product, the, the product which we had worked less time on and uh, which we thought is kind of just something on the back burner. Uh, then uh, our hypothesis was that if we build a marketing tool that can be easily plugged into CRMs, that there would be CRMs that wouldn't have their own email marketing functionality. Mm. But market changed. So Pipedrive uh, launched or is about to launch their own email marketing tool. And Nutshell recently announced theirs publicly. Uh, if you look around, almost all the CRMs have now built or will build a marketing automation tool. So right. uh, while we can do many things better than uh, than the CRMs themselves, it would still be like a very competitive market. Um, and then we figured 
we can't uh, win them. Um, and all, all the while, I think our numbers are good. Like we, our numbers are have been going up and to the right. Uh, but still, we thought that uh, we were hungry for more. Uh, and then this problem of connecting sales marketing data uh, is much less solved than email marketing. Uh, okay. So we we'll just uh, refocus as a as a data connector, as a, as a super connector, as a as a super glue for SMBs, if you if you will. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because like all these big CRMs, they have bigger developer development teams. They have probably more money, so it's hard to beat them at the product game. Uh, taking them on directly and so you're finding a hole a gap in the market to tap into so you you you're saying uh, a super view data connector tool is that your official positioning the way you describe yourself <laughs> and then are you coming across you know people are just not getting what what you're about is, is how do you handle that yeah i think that's that's a problem I and mean, we definitely not Going out in the coming out in the super glue category, but that would put us that would get us quite a good, quite good uh, shelf space in supermarkets, but that wouldn't help us or the or the or the customers. Uh, so I think data integration tool is something which is uh, which is I think broad enough and specific enough. Uh, but even if you look at something like Zapier, uh, if you look at where Zapier is uh, placed in, let's say G two or or Captera or or Gartner, they're all over the place. So there's no one category right. for that and i think for smbs in particular um like on the one hand we are a data integration tool but that puts us in a bucket of of uh, mostly kind of enterprise tools uh, on the other hand we are still a revenue marketing tool we help you to align your sales and marketing because we are very focused on only sales and marketing tools uh, so um so there's there is no category for what we do exactly but let's do this again in five years. Uh, hopefully, by that time, I can tell that hey, Pep, we established this category, um, and then and this is this is this is what the, what is called now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, categories, anyways, are a made up construct. They don't really exist, and uh, the buyers don't really care what category you're in either, as long as they get it. Um, so tell me, what is the plan? What is what is your strategy? How will you win? How will you? How will you grow? Yeah. So we've always like since since day one, and that hasn't changed a lot. Is uh, we've looked at what others are doing um, to almost inverse and not try to do the same. Um, so if you look at maybe uh, marketing automation tools or Martech um, in 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 broadly, not just data integration products, then uh, they, we have players like Active Campaign, Mailchimp, HubSpot. Um, so they do brand really well, especially I think Mailchimp and then HubSpot. So, so their brand awareness, they're, they've been around for for ages. So we, that's something we can't do as a startup. Uh, also, some of, some of the players have raised a ton of money or are making a ton of money. So they they are pretty active in paid. So paid marketing almost by definition. I mean, we do ads, but it's not a dominant strategy for us. Um, and then thirdly, also content marketing. Uh, you can't really out HubSpot, HubSpot. They they right. know a thing or two. I mean, no matter what you type into Google these days, you always land in HubSpot. Their domain ranking is too good. They can rank for anything, yeah. Yeah, and also, like I think one of the worst, if not the best, and one of the best content teams on the planet. Uh, so that um, that almost gave us like a playbook. And we also didn't want to raise a lot yeah, of money. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and that, that gave us a playbook of uh, uh, product should be good enough so that the partners we integrate with would want to promote us. Uh, so that's been uh, the one of the partner here is uh, the tool? Like partner my, is, my prime. Partner, yeah, would be the CRMs we integrate with, but also on the other hand, the, the, the marketing tools we integrate with because we, um, we help to solve. The idea is to make the product so unique and so good that the partners we integrate with would want to promote us one way or the other. Uh, we don't want, I mean, we don't expect them to do a job. Uh, we still have to, have to, of course, do marketing on ourselves as as well. But um, it should start from, uh, I mean, you might call it a differentiation of product, but I would just call your product needs to solve a unique problem. So if we build that into the product, then that takes care of some of the distribution. And then, of course, if we need to do marketing like some SEO and some content here and there, but the bulk um, of marketing is the product itself. And so, so you've identified basically a niche problem that is serious enough 
and but too too, too small that Mailchimp and others have not really sold it themselves yet, uh, and so you're you're picking back uh, piggybacking off of that. When you say that you're building a product that is good enough that the partner will promote you, so a is are you then building the product for the partner, and then what does the partner will promote you really look like? So I mean, we're still building the product for the customer, not <laughs> not the partner. Um, but I mean, my backstory, my my personal backstory is before uh, Outfundal, I was uh, marketing at uh, Bytrive, which is a sales CRM. Uh, and then Bytrive had uh, about ten uh, marketing integrations. Some of them by like top uh, name companies. Some built by Bytrive itself. Some by built by the by the partner. Uh, and still companies were struggling to getting their sales and marketing tools and data connected. Uh, although by, by on paper, you could, you could, you could see that there's integrations there. Uh, but I think just by the, by the way that uh, integrations uh, are usually built in companies, they cover, like they try to build the 20%, which covers 80% of the use cases, but these 80% of the use cases are usually for light users. So the integrations, usually cover maybe 50% of the medium use cases and only 10, 20% of the heavy use cases. So there's a lot of uncovered territory of, um, uh, of, where, uh, of where the players themselves would, uh, wouldn't uh, venture anytime soon or maybe ever. Um, uh, and, and connecting sales marketing data is not trivial. Uh, so there seems to be a big enough market uh, there for, for us to go after. And why 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 do you, why will you win at this? So, what is your unique advantage, uh, if you will? I think. I mean, that's not maybe slightly wishy washy this answer, but I think focus. Like um, that's the only thing we do. We're a small team. We're ten people, but we've been focusing on bringing sense marketing together, the data specifically for uh, over three years. Uh, so we know more about connecting the data and the various API quirks and customer needs than anybody else. So uh, Copper CRM, maybe know much more about G2 integration and and um, uh, connecting to, uh, to Gmail, but uh, we know a ton more about uh, uh, what, uh, what needs to happen if they want to trigger uh, emails at a specific point uh, in the sales process and what data do they want to get back in the CRM? Got it. And uh, when you say that you understand the data better, sorry, the, the customer needs better, tell me what kind of uh, customer research are you doing here that gives you that insight that maybe others don't have? Just talking to customers. Uh, we do intermittent service as well. Uh, but uh, before even starting out funnel, I conducted more than 100 interviews and uh, I, I have I have it as my uh, as my habit to still do a couple of customer calls every week. Uh, just my calendar link is in one of the onboarding emails, and uh, and a good number of people use it every week. Uh, uh -huh. And it really helps that our co-founder Marcus uh, is looking after product, but he also looks after customer support. So uh -huh. there's no silos uh, in that sense. So we get like a very direct feedback loop from customers into the product and back. Totally, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do the same with Winter. I mean, I do the onboarding calls and the sales demos and live chat support. Really is, uh, I think, in early stages of startup, it's like a super rich information source. Like, you learn what people are ready to pay for. Yeah, uh, and I think just, uh, yeah, I think just in, in the early days, but also I think it continues to be a rich source of, of insights and not just a, a, a good way. If, like if I have a product idea, let's say about this data, data connector product, which we are relaunching uh, um, almost as we speak, then I can just bounce off ideas and proposition pieces of the customers that came in for uh, to learn about the, the old product or the, the company overall. Uh, so yeah, I think that's something I, will, I plan to do as long as I have a, a calendar uh, I, I count and, and, and as, as long as we have customers. Gotcha. Uh, are you doing, uh, what are you doing in terms of uh, speed of shipping and validating that you're building the right stuff? Uh, so, you know, you have the customer input that the, they say they want it. 
But how do you know that they actually going to use it? You know, the, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you know this, where people, what they say and what they actually do is not often the same. We, we put a lot of effort into you know, validating things before we build them. So in some, I mean, every customer interview, we can, uh, we can get feature requests and, and validate feature requests. But also we've created a lot of um, fake landing pages and fake ads for uh, features and integrations we don't yet have. Uh, at some point last year, more than 60% of our ad budget was spent on products we didn't have or features we didn't have or integrations we didn't have. Uh, and then you get people to, to, to kind of to sign up to a fake landing page uh, and then you ask them to for an interview. Uh, usually you have to bribe them with an Amazon gift card to get on the phone. Uh, and then you learn what uh, what problem are they looking to solve with a particular integration, what's not working with current the solutions and and then uh, that work has to happen before you start planning and building the things which uh, which will come later. Oh, that's really cool. So uh, tell me more about that. So you have a landing page for a product and it looks like an actual sales page and there's a buy button and when they click to pay for it, then it's like, sorry, schedule a call, call instead and here's here's a gift card. Yeah, almost. So we're not, uh, we don't tend to, to, to have it live and there's no buy now button, but there's a kind of sign up for a early access button, which uh, they fill a form. The form gets added to our CRM and then we just follow up uh, uh, with, a, with a personal email uh, after that. Gotcha. Uh, and then, okay. Uh, and then we, we ask everybody for a, uh, we, most people we are, some, some problems we know well enough that we, we just capture interest and then want to get dig deeper. But if, if you come in from a tool, uh, if you indicate interest in a tool which we don't know yet, then we'll probably want to bribe you to, to get on the phone with us or at least answer your question via email. So t can you tell me about a case where, you know, through that fake ad or smoke testing, you landed upon an insight that you didn't have before and then something happened, something good came out of it? Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, for a, for at, at some, I mean, it, this quantitatively, this has helped us to to not build certain integrations. Uh -huh. So for a while, we were considering building an integration with, let's say, with Fresh Sales, which is a good tool. But that just and then on paper, it seems to have an equal number of users or more than many other CRMs. But mm -hmm. if you actually start, if you create a landing page and start buying ads, there's you don't find the volume. So that saved uh -huh. us time, or maybe that pushed yeah, yeah, yeah. that down in the priority lane. Uh, and then just there's just small little uh, things, like we're considering an Airtable integration right now, uh, and then we've learned that uh, with Airtable integration, it's really important to get data moving from Airtable to the marketing tool. It can, getting the data back is much less important. So we could build half the integration and get almost the full benefit by, uh, by just... Uh, doing what customers want us to do rather than what we think they should want. Mm -hmm. well, that kind of time saving is huge. So yeah. you said you're running ads for the smoke tests, uh, but what else are you doing uh, with marketing? So you have a target customer in mind, you're solving the data integration problem. So then how are you finding the people that have that problem? What is your, do you do organic? Do you do paid, uh, say cold outreach? Uh, we we start from bottom of the funnel, um, so that's uh, that's a kind of a mix of. Uh, so first we start from the product, so the product has to be uh, useful enough for customers to solve a pro solve a problem, and for our partners to to understand that uh, what we do um, uh, is better than other things that they could offer to the to the customer. So we get a good amount of traffic from uh, from the marketplaces of, of CRMs, let's say Pipetrain Marketplace or, or HubSpot Marketplace. And when you say good uh, amount, how, what, what, what kind of numbers are we talking about here? Majority of our signups originates from uh, kind of directly from partners, really? more than half. Um, and that's marketplaces, uh, but also increasingly support teams. So uh, we have uh, Copper and, and, and HubSpot and Pipetrain customer support team uh, they are uh, usually recommending us as a solution to a problem that the, the, their own tool or native integrations wouldn't solve. And how, how have you made sure that the support teams even know you exist? Uh, so that's hard. I mean, most, most of these companies have uh, established part of marketing functions and then there's a, there's a standard way to get in front of the eyes of, uh, of, of the communities and they have a pretty good information exchange systems. 
Uh, but other times we've had to uh, be slightly um, more creative. So we, uh, so Pipestar was half the support team is in a building in Tallinn. Uh, we just bought the ad space on the building just to the announcing our integration uh, with them so that we knew that the people, the whole team was watching out to the window. They could see, oh, it's our logo on the, on the billboard there. Who is it next to? Oh, it's the next out funnel. And we figured that that did the job of increasing awareness uh, in the support team here. Oh, yeah. Guerrilla marketing right there. Um, so that's partner marketing. And then the playbook is slightly... I mean, we don't have a playbook yet. We have uh, three... Existing partners each work slightly differently. Uh, we're uh, working with a few new ones, uh, and we don't have a playbook yet. But we st- like I think the playbook is do what it takes, be a good partner, um, try to build a relationship, uh, add value, um, and then uh, other than that, then we do uh, kind of bottom of the funnel marketing, which means combination of of Google Ads, uh, then SEO and content, uh, and then uh, and then just being helpful in communities and in places where people are looking for help for certain problems. So what are the, what are those communities like Slack groups, Facebook groups, or exactly? So um, there's plenty of like Fiverr has a user group both on Facebook and they have their own. Uh, HubSpot has many communities, active campaign, uh, and the aim there is to uh, you wouldn't find us spamming there, but you would find us answering related questions. Uh, uh, about uh, about kind of sometimes connecting data marketing, sometimes just even marketing or or uh, kind of funnel marketing in general. So research into B two B advertising is saying that um, the most effective is kind of a near fifty fifty like sixty four uh, fifty six split. I think brand and, and activation ads. Yeah. So you you said you're doing like bottom of the funnel ads. Any brand advertising? Not really. I mean, we do retargeting, um, and we do. I think for us, uh, at our stage and that with our budget, it makes more sense to do uh, to drive awareness with uh, with content, uh, and maybe with some kind of guerrilla type marketing. So we had our April Fool's joke the other day, uh, which was we uh, uh, we announced a, a Salesforce and TikTok integration. Which got oh, yes. uh, which which made the circles quite well in in some circles and some people didn't understand it was a joke which I think is a is a, is a compliment to the to the quality of the joke uh, in some ways so we try to do we try to find more cost efficient ways than than uh, than brand advertising to to run uh, mm. to to drive um, awareness so you mentioned content and SEO so being a relatively young company I don't know what your domain ranking is but. Uh, I can't imagine it being, you know, in the 80s yet. So yeah. there's a limited stuff you can rank for. And and uh, a lot of the SEO play and content play is kind of like getting ready for the future. Because yeah. right now, you, you know, probably not driving a lot of traffic. So how are you thinking? Uh, how are you thinking about that? And how are you maybe justifying some of the cost that goes into it, considering that uh, it's going to pay you back down the line more than it is paying you back today? Well, content is crowded. I mean, HubSpot is in our uh, in our kind of um, uh, Zapier as well. Zapier is a crazy good SEO game. So we have to oh, yeah. compete with HubSpot and Zapier. Uh, so we just have to just assume that you, it's, it can't be the dominant channel for us. So it isn't. Uh, and we're just trying to find opportunities in with keyword research. Also, some kind of uh, link building tactics. I think we do better than the big, big players. Uh, so we just we just do what we can <laughs> to to, uh, to outmaneuver to uh, our our kind of uh, indirect and direct SEO competitors. Mm-hmm. So more like a long tail keyword play than niche, I niche think, keywords. I think I, I think a healthy balance. So some of the content, uh, maybe half the content is kind of photo of funnel. So if you look, if you're looking for uh, Mailchimp to copper integration, you will need to find our landing page. We we need to create it, and we also need to create some slightly above the funnel. Like, middle of the funnel, like uh, best corporate integrations. Uh, but then uh, I think 20, 30% of content effort, maybe more, we just put into things that should exist, like ideas we feel passionate about or ideas which we think are helpful. Uh, and then we'll just uh, invest some amount of our resources into just creating great content, even if there's no keyword for that or need new, no built-in distribution for that keyword right away. Yeah, gotcha. 
What are some of the things um, that you have learned now in the, over the last three years about your strategy and how you compete? Uh, you know, you mentioned one about changing the product focus. What are some other, you know, hard earned lessons that you've learned? I think messaging is, is hard to get right. Um, so we started out as very kind of uh, functional, bottom of the funnel, kind of works, but it doesn't really build the brand. Then we stumbled upon revenue marketing as a category, as a theme. So if you align as a marketing, you can drive revenue. Uh, and revenue marketing uh, is not something we invented. It's, it's a term that's been around for, for a good many years, but not really popularized. So we thought, let's popularize that. Uh, but for SMBs, maybe it's too rational. Maybe it's too left brain. So it kind of works. And we kind of, I mean, the people who are in, like, in sales ops, marketing ops, they loved it. But most people in SMBs are not in sales ops, marketing ops. Right. So it's kind of, um, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's been not a failure, but not, not a not a success yet. Yeah, because um, if you haven't come across the term, you know, you need to do a lot of explaining. And you know, if, yeah. if you read like the the book category creation, it talks about them um, how they built customer success as a, as a thing. Basically, the takeaway is that you need millions of dollars to raise awareness that this is an actual category. Yeah. Of course, you're not the only one in the category, but yeah. Yeah, so that's the so it's 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 piggybacking is good, but then if you don't have a peak to piggyback on, then it's uh, it's it's difficult. Um, and then I think um, for views like winter actually has been really useful. Uh, we now more le- more recently uh, we, we thought we will turn our weakness into a strength. So we are in a boring category. We are connecting sales and marketing data. Uh, maybe we should just say it as it is, honestly, and try to make a, a play of words and just turn it into a strength of ours. And then uh, without the winter, we just email it to your friends and colleagues and uh, and just, it's hard to get feedback. But I think it's really good. Thank you for building this, this tool. This was like, we did two rounds there. It really, I think, helped us to uh, kind of to, to uh, first pick the right direction and then iron out some of the, some of the I think, uh, mm. rough edges uh, that needed to be taken out. Yeah. Well, Andros, thanks for uh, coming on and uh, tell us about how you compete. Happy to. And thank you again for inviting me.